Few individuals have had as much impact on life in the 21st century as the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great, who ruled from 306 to 337. He legalized Christianity in the empire and worked with the Bishop of Rome to establish the papacy in that city. He erected a number of important churches, including the old St. Peter's Basilica and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. He convened the early church fathers at Nicaea to codify the Christian belief system. Easter falls on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox because that's what Constantine decreed. And it was Constantine who decided to celebrate the Sabbath on Sunday rather than Saturday to honor the day when Jesus rose from the dead. Churchgoers attend Mass on Sunday because of Constantine. Ancient Rome is this vast place. It's most of Europe. It's the whole rim of the Mediterranean. It goes to what's now uh, Great Britain. It goes into most of the Middle East. It's this vast expanse. And it's a lot of different people. The Romans didn't come and kill everybody. The Romans basically said, we're taking over. You can stay in charge if you follow our rules. And what do you do when you, when you have all these di different people? You pe people speak different languages. People have, di they look different physically. They have different belief systems. It's this big, complex uh, empire, and how do you rule over an empire like that? And one way that you can do it is you can, you can take all of these people who have all these differences, and you can encourage them to all worship the same God and have the same religion. And this is basically what Constantine does. Constantine the Great, by making Christianity the official state religion of the Roman Empire, gives all of these disparate people something very concrete that they can all do together. And it creates this unifying sense in the empire. So it's a very, very savvy political move by Constantine. If you think about what it took for Christianity to become the, the vast religion that it now is, I mean, you have it in this podunk place in the, in the Roman Empire, uh, this, this little province, and it grows and it grows. But as recently as 303, during the time of Diocletian, there's a huge persecution of Christians that takes place during the reign of Diocletian. And Constantine comes along, it's not even 50 years later, and says, we're all going to be Christians now. Around the time that the Greeks were, were busy making coins, the, uh, the Romans were busy developing their civilization, and they copied the designs of the Greek coins at the time. It consisted of the predominantly, again, a, a portrait sideways facing, and the other side typically had uh, various religious and political themes and military themes that were, were appeared on the other side. This was kind of like a, the newspapers of the day. Uh, whatever was going on with the, the, with, the, with the religion or what was going on with, with the military or what was going on with the ascensions and the ups and downs of various uh, rulers appeared on coins. And this is how people in far-flung parts of the world got to see it was the equivalent of television. You get to see who, who's, who's in charge and what they've been doing, who they've been fighting, who, you know, whether they've been winning and losing, and so forth. In the year 312, now this is, this is not 10 years after the great persecutions of Christians, Constantine the Great is in England, uh, or what's called Britannia at the time. He's mustering up his forces, he comes down through Gaul, and he's on a collision course with this other guy named Maxentius. Maxentius also wants to be the emperor of all of Rome. And they're going to meet at this famous battle called the Battle of the Milvian Bridge, which Constantine doesn't have as many troops. He's not as centrally located. He's supposed to lose this battle, okay? And the night before, he has a dream. And in his dream, he sees a, an image of a cross on the sky. So he gets up the morning, and he orders all of his troops to put the cross on their uniforms and their shields, which they do. And then he goes to Milvian Bridge, and he basically wallops this Maxentius. Kills him, takes over. So from that moment on, Constantine considered this was a sign, and the sign told him that he should be a Christian. So in 313, which again, it's 10 years later, it's 10 years after the great persecution of Diocletian, Constantine the Great declares the Edict of Milan which makes Christianity legal throughout the empire. He was tolerant of the Christians. The, his predecessors uh, were busy feeding them to lions because they thought this was a bad idea. This was throwing the, the history of Roman religion out the window. I mean, it's a complete 180 and completely unlikely. Christianity is still a very new religion. 
So there's a lot of debate about what, what's going on. Do we believe this? Do we believe that? Is, there, is Jesus God? Is God, or is he a human? Is he the son of God? Or are they the same person? There's a lot of questions that people have about what we're supposed to believe in. And Constantine knows that he has to settle all these disputes. So he convenes all of the bishops at Nicaea. This is the year 325 AD. The bishops convene at Nicaea, and all of those questions are agreed upon and answered. And what comes out of this is the Nicene Creed. And this is something that, that Christians still use to this day in Mass. The, the prayer that began, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, that came from Constantine's dictate. And the idea there, as he said, the religion has to be institutionalized. We have to make sure that everybody's doing the same thing everywhere, or as close as that possible, so that we can control it. And we can use this as a unifying force. Another thing Constantine did is he founded the city of Constantinople, today's Istanbul. He did this in the year 324. He decided that he didn't want Rome anymore. He wanted to move to this new city that would bear his name. It would become known as Constantinople, New Rome. And Constantinople is this wonderful city uh, and still is. After its establishment as the capital and everybody goes there, it becomes basically the centerpiece of, of, of Western culture for a thousand years uh, until its fall in 1453. Constantine's mother, Helena, St. Helena, uh, was sent on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Rumor has she was supposed to be in her 80s when she did this. She went to Jerusalem, which was still in, in ruins uh, all over the place because of the fact that it was sacked by the Romans in 70 AD. And she goes on basically an archaeological dig, and she finds the true cross of Jesus Christ. She finds the nails of the crucifixion, and she has all these churches set up in Jerusalem, including the Church of the Holy Sepulchre which is a very uh, important uh, religious center now for Christians in Jerusalem. So the interesting thing about Constantine is his name is Constantine and his kids are named Constantine Jr., Constantius, and Constance, which was confusing enough as it is, but he also had a daughter and her name was Constantia. So I think he was very fond of his own name. For the next 50 years, basically, they are running the show. Uh, uh, along the way, the, the, the three sons start fighting and bump each other off until there's one left by the name of Constantius II, and he outlives everybody else. He really sticks around until uh, right around 363, and uh, then he dies, and Constantine's nephews and, and other relatives carry on for a few more years, and that's the end of the Constantine dynasty.